Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the signs and symptoms of selenium toxicity. Now, most of the time I talk a lot about deficiency, right? I talk a lot about vitamin B12 deficiency, zinc deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, even selenium deficiency. That's because a lot of people are deficient in micronutrients. Now, selenium, it's still true that you can have a deficiency in selenium, and I'll talk about that in a little bit here, but a lot of people can accidentally take too much selenium and that can lead to selenium toxicity. So it is a very important nutrient to talk about the deficiency state as well as the state of excess, which in this case is selenium toxicity. All right, so what is selenium? Selenium is a micronutrient. It's incredibly important because it is required for certain proteins to function optimally or optimally. And so these proteins, a lot of them live inside the protein or live inside the thyroid gland and they're called selenoproteins. And they re require selenium to be attached to them in order to catalyze the reaction that they're doing inside of the cell. And a lot of these um, help produce or reduce inflammation and they help clear up free radicals and they help prevent cellular damage. So if you don't have enough selenium, then this damage and inflammation is going to be rampant, especially in the thyroid gland, but these selenoproteins do exist elsewhere in the body. Well, what happens if you have too much? Well, what's interesting is that can become toxic as well. And selenium uh, toxicity can actually mimic a lot of the signs of selenium deficiency. And we're gonna go over those in just a second here. But I wanna talk about two groups of people here. So number one, we have those people that I mentioned previously who are selenium deficient, um, probably because they're not getting enough of selenium from the foods that they eat and so on. So these people know that they are deficient, right? And this is important because if you know that you have selenium deficiency, let's say you have something like Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you're taking selenium to help reduce or prevent inflammation in the thyroid gland itself. So you think, hey, I'm deficient in selenium. If I take selenium, that'll solve the problem, right? So you have a lot of the people who have selenium toxicity because they were previously in the group of selenium deficiency. That's how these two, these two groups are really linked. And that's because selenium is a lot like a Goldilocks nutrient, right? If you have too much, it's going to be a problem. If you don't have enough, it's going to be a problem. Now, in this case, a lot of other nutrients, if you take a little too much, you might just get some stomach pain and your body will pee it out and it's no big deal, right? That generally happens with things um, that your body takes in too much of. It's, it's able to get rid of it. But selenium is one of those that can cause a little bit of more um, uh, nuanced symptoms and nuanced problems that stick around for a little bit longer. So let's talk about some of the minor symptoms of selenium toxicity. And these include things like hair loss, brittle nails, fatigue, GI problems, joint pain, and nausea. Now these are all signs that you're getting a, a little bit too much of selenium, not a lot, but a little bit. So we're talking about minor signs of selenium uh, toxicity or selenium excess. Now, these are much more common than the rare signs, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And that is because it's relatively easy to take too much selenium through your supplementation. So imagine you're taking a selenium supplement, it has 100 micrograms of selenium in it, and you think, okay, well, I'm doing, I'm doing better, right? If, let's say you, weren't, you didn't have enough, so you take this 100 micrograms of selenium, you take it and you feel better. So you think, oh, well, what if I double that dose? So instead of taking 100, you take 200 and then maybe you're like, feel even better. So now you start taking three, four, five, six hundred micrograms of selenium a day. That's how you get these symptoms. The symptoms of hair loss, brittle nails, fatigue, GI problems, joint pains, and nausea. It's minor excess that's resulting in these symptoms. And you'll just feel a little run down. You're just not going to feel like yourself. And you should notice a correlation between as you take your supplements and, or with selenium inside of them or eat selenium rich foods, which we'll talk about later, um, and these symptoms that we just mentioned. It is very unusual for humans to experience the more serious side effects of selenium. However, I will include them here just for completeness. And those include things like neurological problems, paralysis, and selenosis, which is really just selenium poisoning. Now, these things, the real serious ones that I just mentioned, these last three, these tend to occur more in animals who are just consuming insane amounts of selenium. They really don't happen in humans because as humans start to feel a little bit upset, like let's say you're noticing your hair is falling out and your nails are getting more brittle, you're gonna stop doing whatever caused that to begin with, right? But if you're an animal and you're just consuming too much, it's a little easier to become toxic on those. So let's talk about how to avoid this. So if you are concerned about how much selenium you are taking, let's talk about the dose. So when we look at the RDA, which is the recommended daily allowance that um, the governmental agencies produce, they recommend that you take about 40 to 55 micrograms per day in order to prevent deficiency. Now, the problem with the RDA is that it's almost always intentionally set quite low. And it's, it's meant to be there because they would rather you take just enough to get by as opposed to accidentally taking too much. So generally the RDA is pushed down to the lower end of the spectrum. So the RDA, in my opinion, usually for most nutrients 
if selenium included, is really not sufficient. It's enough to get most people out of that deficiency range, but it's not enough for people to thrive and to feel optimal. So in this case, I would largely ignore the RDA. My personal recommendation and, the, and what I've seen patients tend to do best on is somewhere between 100 micrograms and about 200 micrograms per day. Okay, that's my own personal recommendation. There are other doctors out there, however, that will recommend higher doses between 400 micrograms and 600 micrograms per day. Now, really, when we start talking about toxicity, you really don't start seeing toxicity like the symptoms I mentioned previously, the hair loss, the brittle nails, the GI problems, et cetera, until you start getting above that 600 microgram um, range dose. And we have some studies which show that that's the case. However, anecdotally, I have seen people react negatively in that 400, range, 400 microgram range um, and 500 microgram range. So this isn't an exact science. You're gonna have to play around with your dose. And because some people have a tendency to experience those symptoms at the lower end of that 400 to 500 microgram range dose, that's why I push it down to 100 to 200 micrograms. That gets you higher than the RDA, less than that, that higher amount at the 400 to 600 per day range, but still enough to replete everything that you need to provide your thyroid with, with the nutrients that it needs so that you prevent that damage and so on. So that's really what um, the range that I would recommend, but you know, you can figure out what works for you and you could do that by just playing around with your dose. So don't be afraid to do that because a lot of people will say, hey, I feel better on 50 or 100 or whatever it is, right? But they get to those numbers by playing around with the dose and seeing how they feel after they use it for a period of time. So how can you avoid selenium toxicity if you are somebody who's concerned about using it? Well, the first thing I would recommend that you do is check your supplements. Look for selenium and check the microgram dosage, especially if you're using a thyroid supplement um, or, or a supplement that focuses on Hashimoto's or thyroid disease. These tend to have higher doses of selenium because they know, just like I mentioned previously, that selenium is something that a lot of thyroid patients deal with, selenium deficiency. So they fortify supplements with higher doses of selenium to fix that problem. And yes, it does help, but if you're taking taking three, four, five, or six thyroid supplements and not really paying attention, it might have an issue. Now, if you're someone who uses my supplements, you don't need to worry about this. I take the selenium microgram dosage into account with all the supplements, so don't worry about that. But the other supplements I can't speak for, so just make sure you look on the back, check your nutrients, facts, and ingredient level label, and see how much selenium is on each capsule or each serving that you're taking. That's number one. Number two is you should be paying attention to how much selenium that you are getting through your food. Now this can be difficult because um, the nutrient content of the food that you consume depends on the soil concentration of that nutrient, okay? And since we have a lot of soil uh, depletion of nutrients due to modern agriculture and farming techniques, a lot of the nutrients that should be, or that are, you know, like if you looked up and said, how much selenium is in spinach per se, um, there'll be quite a big range. And that's because it depends on how much uh, of that selenium was inside the soil when it was produced and when it was harvested and so on and where it was and, and uh, things like that. It also matters whether or not it's organic, right? Because organic tends to be higher in nutrient contents compared to foods that are non-organic. So you have to put all kind of all of this together and really at the end of the day, it's going to be impossible to know for sure how much you're consuming via food, but at least pay attention to the foods which tend to be naturally high in selenium. And those include things like Brazil nuts, probably the highest. And by the way, just taking five to six Brazil nuts a day can put you over that threshold. So you do want to be really careful with Brazil nuts, especially if you're supplementing because they tend to be very naturally high in selenium. So be aware of that. So we have Brazil nuts, we have fish, we have ham, we have pork, we have beef, we have chicken, we have eggs, we have brown rice, oatmeal, spinach, and bananas. So that's 11. So we have, these are the foods which are just naturally high in selenium. But again, that rate of selenium or the amount and the concentration of selenium in each of these foods will be different based off the things that I mentioned previously. Is it organic? What part of the, uh, the, uh, um, the world was it, was it uh, farmed and, and taken out of and harvested? Those things all matter. And so it's going to be really difficult to nail down the dose, but at least you can know, hey, these things are naturally high in selenium. And I already am taking, let's say 200 micrograms of selenium in my supplements. So it's probably not a good idea to have 200 micrograms of selenium and eat four Brazilian nuts every single day, right? So, but a lot of people will think to themselves, hey, Brazil nuts are good in selenium. It's a natural way to get my selenium. So let me consume these things. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying you have to put them together. So look at your supplements, look at your food sources and put those together to give a rough idea of how much selenium you're getting. And don't be afraid to pay attention to your symptoms because your body will tell you if you are taking too much. So that's all I have for you guys today on, on selenium, on the topic of selenium toxicity. It is a real potential issue, so pay attention to it, especially people who are supplementing for their thyroid or if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So if you have any questions about that, leave them below. I'll do my best to get to those. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. So otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.